All right. Um, hi, I'm Sarah Pemberton, and this is my presentations on the decisions and judgments I will make for choosing a grad school program. So I want to go to grad school because I want to be a counselor. More specifically, I want to get my license in CRC and LMHC. CRC is a certified rehabilitation counselor, and they focus primarily on people with special needs or um, people with addiction issues. And then LMHC is a licensed mental health counselor, and that's just kind of a generic therapist counselor um, with patients who struggle with their mental health. And so what I look for in a program are going to be location, somewhere that's like relatively close to home, um, hopefully like in a big city or somewhere like not too much in the rural area, um, cost of the program, the program itself, what I have found is that there are so many different kinds of licenses that you can get as a counselor or a therapist and no program in the country is the same. Um, with so many different type of licenses, so many different programs focus on, you know, each program typically will have like a certain field that they're focusing on for counseling. So I want to find a program that focuses primarily on mental health and or rehabilitation. Um, some other benefits that I look for in a program could be like how likely you are to get a job right after graduating from the program. So to start off, I want to talk about system one and system two processing. This is a theory by Daniel Kahneman in Thinking Fast and Slow, and it's the two different systems in your brain that you will use when making a decision. Um, so system one are going to be thoughts that come to your mind with like little to no effort doing things that come more naturally to you. And an example, a very popular example is two plus two equals four. So when you hear two plus two, you will just automatically think like, oh, that's four, I know that. And you didn't have to do any thinking about it. Um, where system two is going to require a lot more like effortful thinking and like strong conscious thinking. Like you really have to think about what you're doing and it does not come naturally. It's a decision that requires a lot of processing. So in this decision of choosing a grad school, I will be using primarily system two because I will be using like a lot of out of the box thinking and um, I want to, I'm taking my time choosing a grad school program because I want to do a lot of slow and controlled thinking. Like when I'm, if a grad school is on my list, then I'm want to like think about each school, like why I may like it, why I may not like it and just do a lot of like a lot of processing um, about that program. Um, the next thing is Brought Choices, which is discussed in Nudge by Richard Fowler and um, Cass Sunstein. So fraught choices are like choices that um, you may need an extra nudge in. So the different ones are um, benefits now, costs later, degree of difficulty, frequency, feedback, and knowing what you like. So the first one is benefits now, costs later. So I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, all my parents do, and we are about 15 minutes away from the University of Tennessee. Um, there's a picture of me and my mom right there at a UT game um, from about a year ago. And they have, a, they have a really good counseling program. So some of the benefits of attending UT are gonna be the cost. Um, so I will get in-state tuition, and then I will also have a free place to live because I will likely be living with my parents. Um, the location of the school, it's in my hometown. I know the city. I love the city, um, and I'll be close to my friends and family. But the cost uh, later of attending UT could be the program. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. They focus primarily on school counseling rather than um, either mental health or rehabilitation counseling. So I will not really learn all the information that I would like to learn. Um, like I, I will still be able to get my license in either CRC or LMHC, but I will enter into the field not feeling prepared. Um, so degree of difficulty, the more difficult of a decision, the more likely you will need a nudge. So. Um, this is a very difficult decision and it gets more difficult as I come closer to actually making the decisions. So one thing I have decided I would do is make a pros and cons list for each school and I will talk 
out each pros and cons list like in detail with someone that I trust, either my therapist or my mom or a close friend. And um, I've decided that decisions are going to be a lot more difficult to actually like cross the school off my list or to actually say I want to go here rather than just being like, oh, I like this school. Um, I don't like that school. Like the process of actually doing it is going to be very difficult for me. Um, frequency. So the more often you make a decision, the easier it's going to be. So for example, choosing what to wear, you do that every day. Like you kind of know what you want to wear. You know the weather outside and you know how to dress and Say you have an outfit that you really want to wear, but then it's just not good weather for it. You can say, oh man, well, I'll wear it another day. Um, so I only get to go to grad school once. Um, and so the decision is going to be a lot more difficult because I can't be like, oh, I didn't make the right decision. That's okay. I'll just try again tomorrow. Um, and something that Fowler and Sun Sunstein said are that like caught my attention are some of life's most important decisions do not come with many opportunities to practice. Um, and that's something that I think I'll definitely have to keep in mind. Like I will not be able to practice this decision. So I will need to make sure I'm doing everything I can to make the right decision the first time. Um, feedback. So I would definitely have a lack of feedback before I make my decision. You won't really get any feedback um, at all really about the program. Um, I'll only get real feedback after I've been attending a school for a period of time. Like I know that I will be hearing from like other students or professors talking about the program, but they're likely only going to talk about the positives or I want to hear about the negatives too. Um, and then so knowing what you like, I know what I like in a program and I know what I don't like in a program. Um, so that's something that I definitely have to keep in mind, like looking at schools that offer things that I do like, like the program, the location, the cost. Um, like, does the school have the qualities that I'm looking for? I remember when I was touring colleges, if I didn't like a school, I knew it from the instant I walked on the campus, you just kind of had that gut feeling of like, I don't like it here. However, this is unfamiliar territory and this is um, a pretty a, a different decision than I made um, when choosing a college. Cause in college I was basically focusing on like, how are the, how's the student life, the sports and the Greek life where, cause I was undecided when I came in and now I will be looking at like exactly how's the program, like what's it like here? Um, how likely are you to get a job afterwards, stuff like that. Um, and then the non-invented here bias, that, is, that comes from the upside of irrationality from Dan Airely. And so basically what that's saying is people believe that their ideas are better than others. So how this relates to me is professors are gonna believe that their program is the best, you know, in the country. And then students will likely believe that too, like I, would say I definitely believe that Birmingham Southern psychology department is the best psych, psych department in the South. Um, and I know that many of the professors would also believe that where one of my friends who goes to UT may say that their department is the best program you can find. Um, and it's difficult because every school claims to be the best. And I keep thinking to myself, how do I know which one actually is the best if all they're saying if all of them are saying that they're the best and so the non-invented here bias has definitely shown me that every school is going to say that and every school is going to be like we're the best come here and i need to just kind of push that idea aside and be like they're saying they're the best but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best for me like while a program may be perfect for someone else it might not be perfect for me um, and then, so the reason that people think that their ideas are better than others or why they are better than other people is people's ideas um, typically align with um, like what they believe in. So for a professor, for example, a professor may believe that an exam is the best way to test a student's knowledge. So they're going to only give exams and not give any papers or something like that. Um, and then like online learning, a lot of people may believe that they learn better online than in person where I don't believe that. But if they believe that, then they're going to offer a lot of uh, online classes in their program. 
So students in the program are going to claim that their program is the best because it's what they know and it's what they're a part of. And Fowler and Sunstein had a quote on page one on one on page one twenty where it says people tend to naturally accept internally developed areas as more useful and more important than those of other individuals and organized organizations. So in this example, he was actually talking about people in the workplace. Um, so while you may not be the owner of a company, you are still going to believe that your company is better than other people. And that's because that's the company that you associate yourself with. And um, it's like where you are every day. So you're just going to naturally believe that it's better than others. Um, and then the next concept by Fowler and Sunstein is long term effects on short term emotions. So right now, um, due to COVID-19, my emotions are very fragile and very all over the place. So um, I think it's no secret that a lot of students are struggling through COVID-19. And many times I tell myself that I don't even want to go to grad school because of just how hard it is to be a student right now. And I'm just like, I can go find a job somewhere else. I don't want to keep going to school. But um, I know that in order to do what I want to do, I need to push my short term emotions aside. Um, something I keep telling myself is like, why don't I just wait until the pandemic is over? But like, do we truly know if it's ever going to be over? Um, like, is there ever going to be a right time to go to school? I just have to push those emotions aside. That's something that I've Learn from um, the upside of irrationality is that the short terms are really going to affect how I feel. Um, so, like I'm, oh, um, many of the emotions I'm feeling right now could affect me in the future. So, another thing that I'm feeling is like fear of money, and I know that I'm not going to make that much money as a counselor. And Right now, I'm kind of seeing a lot of people struggling with money, and I see my siblings who are very successful, making a good amount of money. And I keep telling myself I could go and do another job, um, go to another program that will make more money, but then um, I know that's gonna affect me long-term because I decided to go into this career not for the money. I wanted to go in because I want to like genuinely help people because I'm like, I've had therapists before and I see like how amazing they are. And so I kind of already put it through my head that I didn't care about the money. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and people are just talking about money, money, money. And it's like a fear of not making enough money um, has definitely affected some of my like decisions in grad school recently. While that is something that's really important, it is not the long-term goal that I'm going for. I, don't want to be focused only on money. Um, so that's something that this book has definitely reminded me of that um, while I may be feeling a certain emotion right now, I will not and hopefully not be feeling that same emotion, you know, 20 years down the road. Um, so my, how will my short term emotions affect my choice of grad school? Because of the pandemic, I have been thinking I really want to stay close to home um, just in case I get sick and I can, you know, I go home for two weeks. I fortunately didn't get sick this semester, but I know a lot of people who did and um, some of them weren't able to go home. They lived, you know, 12 plus hours away. And so they had to quarantine in their apartment or in a random apartment if you got sent away somewhere. And um, that would just be very difficult. And I, so I have anxiety disorder and I would like to be close to home. That's something that's like my short-term emotion, I, like if I'm having a bad and anxious day, I'm like, oh, I, I need to go to grad school somewhere close so that way I can be close to my mom on these days where I know that's just a short-term emotion and it's not something that's long-term. And, and my emotions are kind of constantly changing and I'm constantly changing my mind. I'm like where I want to be and where I want to go. And I mean, you know, something new pops into my head every day, but I need to remember to like stick to my like gut and what I believe in um, when it comes to choosing a grad school and then but what my negative emotions have taught me they've reminded me why I want to be a counselor um, talking it out with my counselor has really showed me like this is what I want to do and um, it just kind of reminded me that these are short-term emotions and not long-term um, counseling is often overlooked but it can be very beneficial for many reasons and I kind of want to like remind people of that um, many people are going through emotional struggles right now and I really want to help them walk through it um, 
and I hope to one day use the concepts that I've learned in these books. I think I've definitely learned a lot of things about myself um, reading these books, and I think it's definitely something that I could pass on to other people. I really hope to share it one day um, with my clients. So my biggest takeaways from this project are to pay close attention, close attention to the emotions I'm feeling in the moment and whether or not they align with my long-term goals. So if I'm thinking something, I want to like really sit there and think through if this is actually aligning with what I want to do. Um, and if not, then I just want to forget the idea and I want to be sure to thoroughly think of the pros and cons of every school and think of the benefits now, costs later in particularly, like a lot of programs I think could benefit me in the moment, but then it could hurt me in the long run. And to remember that while some schools may seem perfect on the outside, um, before I choose that school, I want to make sure that it's perfect for me and not just like an outward thing. Um, and then here's my references. I use the upside of irrationality, thinking fast and slow and nudge. Thank you.